Hey guys, welcome back to another Luxago Premium Review. You can probably tell by now if you've been following my last few videos that I'm pretty obsessed with Luxalgo. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can come and check out this article which is all about my experiences and what I'm learning about with Luxalgo Premium. And if you want to join and subscribe to Luxalgo, you get a Discord as well, which we rarely talk about. You get access to Discord as well as all the premium indicators. If you use my link right here and use the coupon code STA30, they'll give you 30% off all the indicators in the package. So it's well worth it. It's something that I'm using every day in my own trading and I'm pretty obsessed with it and I keep learning new things. And in this video, I really want to show you something that I just really kind of came across in today. And so it's something that kind of changes everything and it, you know you might not have noticed this if you're if you're using it or you might have done what I've did which is just discard the Lux dashboard part of the program. And so that was a huge mistake because it really does make a difference uh, when you're using Lux Algo. And so this is the overlay signals here. So you can see down the right here, this is a tiny little box and I think that's part of the problem. This is called the Lux Algo dashboard. And so for me, I just saw this as a little box. So if you go into the settings right here, the default setting for the box is small. So it's something like tiny or small. Let's see what it looks like. So you see how small this is? I just kind of glanced at that and goes, oh, I can't read that, I'm not going to bother with it. It just looks like it's kind of random stuff anyway. Not that important. Well, it turns out it's super important. It's really, really important. So the first thing I did earlier was put it to large so you can actually see it right here. And so the reason this is important is it gives you some really valuable information. And the first thing that I realized is this optimal sensitivity. I'm like, what do they mean sensitivity? And so this is something I'd never even looked at in the sentence, which I probably should have because it's really important. So this is what I mean. So if you go into Lux Algo signals and overlays, I've got it on confirmation mode, which is my favorite mode. And you can see the signal sensitivity at the moment is set to five. You hover over here, it tells you what that is. So sensitivity, the signals to price variations, use higher values to trade longer term trends or see the recommended value in the dashboard. So over here, you can see at the moment the optimal setting is telling me that it's 19 and at five, that means that's completely off, right? So watch what happens to the buy sell signals. So that's a sell, buy, buy, sell, sell, buy. So you can see all these signals as they are right now. But watch what happens when I go into here. Let's open it up again. When I open it up and go into the, let me just open it up here, the back into the dashboard settings and the sensitivity. So move this out of the way over here. All right. So see as I change the sensitivity, watch what happens to the graph with the signals. So as I slowly go up, you'll start to see the number of signals just disappear and things start to change. So you start to get signals that are less frequent, which is awesome because you don't want too many signals, you want scalping every minute. But you get signals that the winds are much longer, so you get more gains per signal as well. So if you look at this one. And as we go up, you'll start to see this change even more. So let's go to 10 here. So look at this one now, you get a signal here and then a big run up here. And when that was much lower, down here, you got all these mixed signals. So you can see that if you want to have more relaxed trading and also match the sensitivity that they tell you to, you can slowly go up and increase this number of signals sensitivity, which is awesome. And this might be a, a key factor if you've been struggling with Lux Algo. It might be something that you really want to look at. And one thing you can do is you can match the signals. This changes those, so the sensitivity will change. So it's sitting at 19 right now, but maybe two hours ago, the market's closed at the moment, the, this might have been at five or 25, we just don't know. So one thing to do is to set it, set it manually like this. So we put it to 19. To me, you can see immediately, they'll look at this. So now you have one buy signal here, and then an hour or two of just upsell. Look at how neat this is compared to when it was at like three or five or 10. You can see as we go back down, this gets worse again. All these signals start to come in. It's still not bad. I mean, at 13 here, you have a buy and then a sell, then a buy and then a sell, still really good. But wouldn't it be easier just to hold with it set to the optimal and allow this just to go through its whole, whole signal here up to here. And this is the one minute chart, by the way. So that's a really cool thing. So before we go any further, let me show you the thing that's even cooler, which is the auto sensitivity. So if you scroll down here, you can see this autopilot sensitivity. So at the moment it's off. So all that it displays is this data, including the sensitivity stuff. If you want to change that to do it by itself, you can just select midterms, what I use. Uh, and then what happens is you can see the autopilot is enabled 
and it'll set it to 19 in this case. You can see these signals are still the same. And so the um, basically you can set it so that you don't have to keep changing um, the sensitivity or keep an eye on it so much. So that's one awesome tip that I learned today and I'm excited to implement in my trading. It might seem basic to some people that maybe read the manual properly, but I know a lot of people like me jump into these things and just look at the signals and they play with the different oscillators and things. But this is a simple, simple step that you could take that might change might change everything for you. So I have the dashboard on, obviously. You can see the autopilot is now enabled. Now the next key thing that I really am excited about, and I think you guys will be too, is going through what the dashboard actually tells you. So if you look at the dashboard, I think I can close this out in a moment. Yeah, so if you look at the dashboard here, the first thing it shows you is the trend strength. And so this is a value between 0 and 100%. And anything below 50, and it'll actually display, um, basically it's not a trend, right? It's, it's a choppy, ranging market. And so this little fire signal right here changes to something that looks more like, I found it in the manual here earlier, more like this, so a little snowflake type of thing. So it basically gives you a trend reading on the particular time frame that you are working on. So on the one minute time frame at the moment the trend is really strong, 77% because it's a buy signal it's in an uptrend so it's a really strong uptrend that we're in at the moment. So this kind of gives you extra confirmation right, you can say okay we have an uptrend, the volatility here is moderate so the, you get this moderate on the right here. That means like you could see significant price movement. If it was high, you'd probably see more price movement potential, right? So you'd have a, a bigger potential for a big profitable move. Uh, or, and then so for here at the moment, it's moderate. It goes down to low as well. This little graph on the left is also important. That shows that the, the volatility is moderate, but it's a decreasing. So the little signal sees a little graph going down. That means like the volatility is decreasing. So that can be useful information if you're looking to take a trade. The squeeze indicator, uh, basically that's just a, a measure of the, the price consolidation. So the higher it is, the more likely it's consolidating and um, basically compressing. So it's not super useful to me, it's probably the least useful one of these. Then the volume sentiment here says that most of the selling, most of the volume recently has been selling volume minus 12%. And that goes from minus 100% to plus 100%. Uh, which is pretty interesting. So one thing you can do here is you can look at different time frames, right? So this is only on the one minute, but what's happening on like the one hour? So if we flip out to the one hour here and then reset it so we can actually see everything, you can see on the one hour it's it's a whole different story, right? So you want to be doing this I think with trading in general, but with Lux Algo it really really makes it easy. So you, you want to be looking at the longer time frames and then to get kind of the overall trend and then narrowing down to the shorter time frames where you're trading if you're trading scalping or whatever. So check this out. Down here on the one hour you can see it's actually ranging. There's no trend. So the one hour you're just having this chop which you can kind of see by the plot as well. So there's no trend. You've got that little snowflake. The volatility is high so you're getting these big moves but we're not trending anywhere. We're just getting these big fluctuations. Uh, squeeze is 29% and the volume is slight buying volume here 5%. It's interesting. So you can look at the different time frames and kind of see, it's four hours, see what the signals are doing, like this is a nice buy signal here. So you can see the signals are generally a lot better when we have strong trend, right, which is what you'd expect. So you may want to hold off if, if it's a choppy market and not actually take any trades until you start to see this trending. Anything above 50% is a strong uptrend, which is, is good. Uh, green. And so you can see here, just by looking at this, you can tell that this is a better better time frame, right? So the four hour, you got buy here, really nice profit taken up here, sell, buy. So it's really good. So if you compare that strong trend to the shorter time frames, which I think was like an hour, right? Let's have a look. So there's almost no trend here and the signals are not as good. They're still working, like buy here, sell here, buy here, sell here. But they're not, you're not getting that long trend that you're looking for, right? So. Uh, the autopilot is still enabled, so again, if you weren't on autopilot here, you would be getting different indications because the sensitivity would be off. Uh, it wouldn't be optimized. So I'm not saying you should go into your settings immediately and do this. It's just something to think about, that this is kind of the way it's supposed to work, is you're supposed to have it so that you're matching the sensitivity uh, for these signals. Because again, if you go into on like the one hour time frame here, so if we go into the overlays again right here, 
the system, like this whole the whole Lux Elgo thing, is just so customizable that it can be a little overwhelming to start with. But it's uh, something that really, I think, has that real customizability that really does help your trading, in my opinion. So let's turn the autopilot off. So it's saying that the optimal sensitivity is 18 if it's to do this manually. So I just wanted to kind of show you again what happens if you mess with the sensitivity. So if we go to change the sensitivity, so let's see what we're actually at. It's up here. So we're at 19, so we're not quite optimized. Go to 18. These buy signals drop down. I don't know if you saw that. They did change even just with one point, so they jumped up a little bit. But of course, if you change this significantly, you'll change the, the signal significantly as well. Going to go down more. You can see below 10, you started to get a lot more buy and sells, which may or may not be, you know, what you're looking for. For me, I'd rather have fewer signals that are more accurate with longer profits, take profits, you know, bigger profits, always good. So this is all I really wanted to talk about in this video, but I think it's really important. I think being able to optimize the system, get the information from these extra dashboard values could really help you because if, if you're in a choppy market you might not want to trade at all right so this will remind you even though a lot of people could probably eyeball it this will remind you that hey you're in a choppy market there is no trend here and um, maybe switch to a different time frame where there is more of a trend like a shorter time frame or a longer time frame so again the autopilot sensitivity is in here so I usually put it to midterm you can play with a different sentence but um, yeah so hopefully that's helpful. Um, the more I play with Lux Algo, the more I like it. I think it's just it's really fun to play with and I'm really enjoying it. So I'll leave a link in the description below. You can go and get all the videos that I've done on this. They're down the bottom here somewhere. I'm continuing to add to them and I think this has been, this is probably going to continue to be a focus of mine for a while because I'm enjoying it so much. And I think you guys would enjoy it too. You can do it for as little as a month. If we go to the sign up page here, you can see the pricing, it's really, really reasonable. Let's see, I can actually find it a little bit laggy. So the pricing up here. So if you use the STA30 code, you can get 30% off these prices, right? So you can bring that down to 50 bucks or something, and this to 100 bucks for three months. So that's, that's pretty much a bargain, in my opinion. Even a year you can get for like 400 if you use my, my coupon code, which is STA30, which you can find right here uh, in this article. So definitely come and check it out. I think it's something that most people can benefit from. And there's probably settings in here somewhere that you'll be able to set up. I'm gonna talk a little bit more in the coming videos about some of the oscillator stuff that I've not talked about yet. And also go through some of the remaining uh, overlay conventional signals a little bit. I've been looking at the Neo Cloud, for example. We've talked a little bit about smart trail, reversal zones and things, but there's still quite a lot of things to do in here and to test. So hopefully you guys will continue to watch these videos and I'll catch up with you in the next one.